embryonic stem cells will make motor neurons, and those motor neurons will very likely survive in the spinal cord. So where's the problem? The problem is, it goes back to connections. Um, the reason, you know, you have a, a, a neuron in your spinal cord, to get to, to access this muscle down here, it has to connect. So you have to put a new connection out all the way down your leg to get to that group of muscles. That's where the challenge is. And stem cells aren't going to cure ALS unless you can reconnect them efficiently. When your muscles connect, you're about this big. <laughs> so the connections that all the pathways lay down, after that point, it's just stretching, right? You're born and you're this, you're this big. And now you're you know, six foot, whatever you are. And during that gro growth, you're not making new connections every day. You're stretching and adding to the current connections. So by the time you're an adult, it's a real challenge to get something to reconnect from the spinal cord all the way back to the appropriate muscle group in a human. It may be possible in a mouse, which is a, you know, <laughs> mouse is this big. There's a real practical issue of how do you get regeneration. You'd have to do something pretty invasive right now. So you'd have to, you'd have to transplant. So if you're in end stage in ALS and you really can't move anymore and your muscles are no longer connected, you'd have to somehow get the motor neuron. You'd have to transplant the motor neuron, leave it for a few weeks to, to settle in. <clears throat> then you'd have to encourage the new growth of the axon to come out through the ventral root and get back to the muscle. This is possible to do. Um, it's never been attempted really in the rat yet successfully, but there are bridging methods. You can layer, it's rather like the breadcrumbs in Hansel and Gretel, you know, you load of breadcrumbs and the axon, the connection will start following the breadcrumbs. And then you have to hope that when you get to the muscle, the muscle's not too atrophied and dying, it's able to accept the connection. And then you also have to hope that the upper motor neuron will connect successfully with the lower motor neuron. Now I think it's going to come as well, but I think the first challenge is to get motor neurons, and I think we'll do that with stem cells. The second challenge is to get reconnection to the muscle. Um, but, you know, if we don't have the motor neurons, we can't even try doing the experiments we need to do next to, to make them grow out towards the muscle. So it's really exciting that we now at least have motor neurons. And so I think it's one step uh, further towards being able to have a clinical effect.